Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review today. We're going to look at the NECA Gargoyles Steel Clan Robot Ultimate Action Figure. Now I'm a huge fan of Gargoyles, and every time there's a release, I get very excited, and this is no exception. And this one is an army builder, which is my specialty. I cannot wait. I got this guy from the last toy store. Saw someone say they were in stock there. Found a coupon code on Google for 10% off. Bam, here we are. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, Disney Gargoyles, Steel Clan Robot, Ultimate Action Figure. On the front, we have six Steel Clan Robots here. Gargoyles, Steel Clan Robot. One side, you can see the robot. Other side, similar picture. On the back, here's the figure. Here are a bunch of different display options, accessories. I can't wait for that Xanatos figure. Here's a checklist of a bunch of other figures. Some are out, some are not. Looking forward to Lisa Maza, Xanatos in suit. They should be really soon. Then we have Xanatoth in his steel armor suit. That's going to be a little bit later. Lexington, also a little later. Angela, she should be out pretty soon as well. At the bottom, a bunch of credits, and there's a barcode, in case that helps anybody. This is one of NECA's ultimate figures. Window box packaging, you can hear the Velcro when I open it. Gargoyle's packaging is huge. On the inside, here's the Steel Clan robot standing there, posts up, and here he is in the package. So with no further ado, let's open him up. And did get six of these figures. Why, you may ask? Well, our building's my specialty. They use a ton of these steel clan robots throughout the show. There were five in the first five-parter, and then you had them back time and time after that. All right, now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He comes with a ton of awesome stuff. We've got removable wings. We have six alternate hands, totaling eight interchangeable hands. Two peggable blasters that could go on his wrists a removable tail, and then three flame effects for the rocket, possibly under his feet. But before we take a look at all that, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is a Steel Clan robot. Essentially, it's a robot gargoyle controlled by Xenatos. They can fly instead of glide, steel instead of stone, stronger, but they don't think for themselves, and they're not actual beings, just robots controlled by Xenatos. Both the evil Xanatos and the good Xanatos have used them. So let's take a look. Now, the figure itself feels, I don't know, like a little gummier than I'm used to. Maybe it's not the right word. A little more rubbery. A little less hard plastic. And that's it's not that he's rubber. I don't know. It just feels a little bit different than what I'm used to. Looks like Goliath as a robot, which is exactly what it is. I remember those earpieces from the show, the red eyes, so far it looks very accurate. The armor kind of reminded me of Batman Returns armor. Everything looks really good so far. Looks like we actually have double jointed elbows. Maybe double jointed knees as well. Big giant gargoyle feet, metal talons. Flame exhaust will go back here. Shoulder pads are very soft. They're not going to break. Thank you for not making it some hard plastic that will break immediately. They do a good job of mixing the two together. I like him. like him a lot. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Looks good. Very crisp. Machine. Definitely looks like Goliath. We finally have an army of bad guys. And here is the figure broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories. Can't wait to put these guys together. In fact, I'm looking forward to putting all six of these guys together. Let's start off by looking at his hands. He has a total of eight of them. Four right hands and four left hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here's his second pair of hands. This is a pair of gripping hands. Here's his next pair of hands. These are some open hands. They are pretty normal default hands. They should look good relaxed at his sides when he's not up to anything. And here's his final pair of hands. These look to be a pair of grabbing, maybe choking hands, maybe even throwing hands. If he was a regular gargoyle, I'd even say they're climbing hands or clawing hands. Not so good his tail. Just like all the other gargoyles, he comes with a tail separate. You have to attach it. Made of a rubbery material. It's got a bendy wire inside. It'll take pretty much any shape you want it to. It's got some holes to allow it to breathe. It's got a peg that'll attach to the figure and it's hinged for articulation. Here's the Steel Clan robot without the tail. On the back, underneath everything, there's a little hole here where you'll attach the tail. And then here he is with the tail attached. 
the tail can rotate. It's hinged, at least a little bit, and has the bendy wire going to allow you to take different shapes. In addition to that, it supports the figure when he stands. Very helpful with these large top-heavy figures. And then speaking of the way they stand, the proper way to stand a gargoyle is not like this. This is the easier way for the figure to have their feet flat, but the gargoyles themselves, they stand about like this. Sort of upright on their toes. You got the back talons not touching the ground. So set up both your legs that way and use your tail to support him on the back. Now let's check out and attach the wings. So these wings, they're supposed to be metal. They're flat, sleek. They're not organic and skin tissue like the other gargoyles. Now the wings can fold shut. They can also open up, get much longer. Here's a peg that's going to attach into the figure, allowing rotation, and it's going to be hinged as well. This kind of gives you a bunch of different options in these wings. You can have them upright like this, taking a lot less space, or spread out like they're flying or gliding. Looks like these wings are going to be a lot more convenient than your average gargoyle's wing. Here's a steel clan without the wings. On the back side of the figure, there are two different pegs here to attach the wings. And here he is, with the wings attached. They feel very sturdy, a lot of the other gargoyles. Very tight, and they make that horrible noise as you move them, kind of ratcheted. Makes you feel very uncomfortable moving them, but they stand upright much better than previous releases. They're not sagging, very firm in there. Of course, they have the rotation as well. And then the wings themselves. They can actually spread out, although very tight to be able to do it. I don't know, it looks kind of weird like this though. Still, a lot of different display options. Personally, I think that looks really good. It's not nearly as wide as regular gargoyle releases. And if you wanted to, they can flap their wings, although that's not how these guys fly. This is about the shortest year to make the wingspan, and this is how I'm going to display these gargoyles. They're going to be very tall, but not that wide. I appreciate that they can do this, and it kind of makes these wings appear to the other wings, but I understand these wings are metal, they're machine, they're not organic. Hinging and making them look like this is a lot more natural on a robot versus an actual organic gargoyle. Still, his wings can be this small, and they can extend about this far before they start looking ridiculous. I don't know, I just don't see the point of this right here. You can also fold his wings back. This is probably the most efficient way if you want them to stay next to each other to be able to see each other's figure. It does make them quite long, going from forward to back, but if you want to stand them up in a row and not block each other, this is about the best way. There are at least a lot of different sort of options with these wings. And here are all six of these Steel Clan robots, fully assembled, wings attached. They do take up a lot of space like this. Still, it's an arm builder you're going to have to have if you're into armor building at Gargoyles. And those are two things I'm big time into. There are various ways to display these guys, but their wings are pretty big, just like the other gargoyles, and it'll block the other figures. And the Steel Clan robots, they really don't make any sense with their wings off. Well, I guess neither do the regular gargoyles. Now for his blaster or lasers. I was kind of curious how NECA was going to handle this. They have some lasers that sort of tuck into their forearm armor. I was wondering if they're going to actually make it retractable, but they'll probably just make it more prone to break. Instead, they're peggable. Looks pretty good. Nice little laser blasts. So on his forearm here, there's a little piece that looks like it's going to come off. Come on, buddy. Get that off, and you can replace it with this blaster. So, two different display options with their wrists. Here's a Steel Clan robot with both the blasters attached, and he's articulated in such a way that you're going to allow them to look forward. His arms, they can rotate very nicely. Very good for posing. They did an excellent job on this figure. And now let's look at the flame exhaust pieces that you'll attach when he flies. He's got three of them. They're all cast in a semi, sort of transparent orange plastic. I believe the two smaller ones will go into the bottom of his feet. They're pegged. And this large one will go into the sort of rocket onto his back. Here's the Steel Clan robot with no effects attached. You can see onto his back. The little rocket here is going to have a larger piece. And then each foot has some pegs for the other flame effects. And here he is with the effects attached. 
Now, in order to use them properly, you're going to need a flight stand and a very strong flight stand to hold a figure of this heavy. But that looks really cool there. You can really see this guy sort of flight, flying. Very well done. A lot of display options. Good job, NECA. Here are two McFarland DC Multiverse flight stands holding this guy in the air. He's a heavy figure. He's big. I put one around each leg. Just to kind of show off his blast effects. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at the figure and his accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head. Standing at about 7.9 inches tall. Which can translate to about 20 centimeters. And if you go to the top point of his wings. Just about 11 inches tall. Now for his articulation. Let's go to start off the wings. The wings themselves are going to be hinged here. Go outward. They're going to be hinged here with rotation. His head here, ball joint, rotate around. Of course, the wings are going to obstruct with the hair a little bit right now. They can go up and down about that far, rotate around, tilt his head side to side. He has articulation at the bottom of the neck and another ball joint at the top of the neck. Shoulder pads get completely out of the way. They're not going to obstruct any of the articulation there. Shoulders on a ball joint. They go out about this far. Very big shoulder joints. Very tight. Up, down, around. All that good stuff. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. They go all the way in. He's got rotation here with the armor. The wrist is going to rotate. It's going to be hinged as well. Torso, he's got a ball joint, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back between the two. Pretty good range of motion. Legs, ball joints, complete to splits. They can rotate independently of the balls. They go forward, about that much, back, not too much, a little bit. Double jointed knees, they go back all the way there. His ankle, forward and back at the base. Rotate, another ball joint there. God, it's hard to show that with the wings. There we go. Forward and back, rotate around, down here. Forward and back as well. Also, rotation, and then his tail. It's got the bendy wire in it. It's hinged up here, and the tail can rotate. Here's a look at Xenatos. He's looking at the steel clamp robot, not fully assembled, covered by tarp, but he knows what it's going to be soon. And here are all six of his steel clamp robots assembled, lined up. Here are all six of these steel clamp robots on top of Castle Wyvern. Here's the steel clan surrounding Goliath. They all deploy their forearm lasers and get ready to shoot Goliath. Goliath puffs up, gets angry, you see his wings expand, he's getting ready to fight. And here comes the rest of the clan to help defend the castle. The gargoyles are tearing up the Steel Clan robots. You can use the Steel Clan in both a castle type setting or a city street setting. Here are the gargoyles looking up toward the Steel Clan. And here's an image of Bronx. He's got the Steel Clan pinned down and he's ripping off their forearm cannon with his mouth. Now let's check them out next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other gargoyles figures. Here are all six of these Steel Clan robots. Army building at its finest. Now, I can't think of a lot of other army builders they could do in the Gargoyles line. I mean, maybe if they did the Iron Steel Clan robot. Maybe a Quarryman from Season 3. Maybe one of Xanatos' sort of security military guys from the first five-parter. I don't know. This is probably the best and most common one they're going to do. Here's a Steel Clan robot next to Demona. Looks like we finally got some more villains to add to the ranks. Demona is arguably the main antagonist in the entire series, at least her or Xanatos. And here he is next to Thalog. Thalog is a clone of Goliath, looks very similar to Goliath. Kind of like the Steel Clan robot. Another villain here. The next villain I believe they're going to make is going to be Xanatos in his business suit, and then Xanatos in his Steel Clan robot suit, and then I believe Macbeth, and then one of the hunters, John Canmore. And now, Next to some recent Gargoyles releases, here's a Steel Clan robot next to Broadway and Brooklyn. I cannot wait for Lexington to complete the original clan. And now, 
next to the Sega Genesis video game version of Goliath, then next to Hudson and Bronx, and finally, next to the man himself, this is the figure that started it all, this is Goliath, the main star of the show and franchise. Here's the entire NECA Gargoyles collection so far. We're finally starting to get some characters. Line is finally gaining some momentum. It was so slow the first couple of years. We've had, I guess, four drops within the past 60 days. That is fantastic. And we're supposed to get another three within the next month or so, being Angela, Xanatos, and Elisa Maza. Now, on the horizon, after that, we're supposed to get Xanatos in his armored suit, as well as Lexington. And then beyond that, Coldstone. I cannot wait for Coldstone. Cannot wait for more reveals. San Diego Comic Con just around the corner. Come on, NECA, show me what's up. Besides Gargoyles, here are the most recent NECA figures that I've gotten. From Teen Junior Ninja Turtles crossover with Universal Monsters, Casey Jones as Phantom of the Opera, and Donatello as the Invisible Man. And then from the actual Universal Monsters line, we have Phantom of the Opera and the Bride of Frankenstein. And here he is, next to some other larger NECA figures. Predator, Alien, King Kong, and Frankenstein. Now let's check him out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a NECA figure, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect and work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his NECA brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from NECA toys, all 7-inch scale. Then, next to even more NECA figures. And now, with some Jack-specific wrestling figures. Here's the Steel Clan robot, next to a pair of scissors. And here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, with some McFarlane toys. And here he is, standing with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, with some Mattel. DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures, and here with some Mafex figures, then with some Hasbro Marvel Legends, and here he is, next to some SH figure arts action figures, and finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So overall, this is a fantastic action figure. I love army builders, I love gargoyles, I love this figure. For some reason, he looks a little bit more animated than I expected him to look. The other gargoyle figures are very realistic looking. And I mean, he's not exactly cartoony, but just, I don't know, not exactly what I expected. Also, he feels like he's made of more of a softer plastic, which actually works really good, but just feels a little bit different than I expected. It's not really a bad thing. His accessories are awesome, plentiful, although I really need a flight stand that'll support a guy this heavy. His articulation is actually pretty impressive as well. The wings, they frustrate me. They're kind of fragile. They're giant, but there are at least a lot of different options. You can tuck them in like this, you can put them behind them, you can stretch them out, do all kinds of different things. At least there are two or three different choices of how you want the wings to be in the way. If I were to rate this guy, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. Really enjoying this figure, had a lot of fun shooting this video. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.